present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Rob Bryden. Hello and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. You join us this week in the fine city of Newcastle at the Theatre Royal. The uh, first settlement here grew in Roman times around the bridge called Pons Aelius, uh, built in 122 AD by the Emperor Hadrian with taxes raised on the local Britons. Aelius relates to Hadrian's family name, while Pons is what the Britons called him. <laughs> Uh, during the early 20th century, Newcastle became a major shipbuilding centre, but the famous Swan Hunter shipyards closed with the decline in demand for vessels in which to go hunting swans. <laughs> Opening in 1838, Bainbridges at Eldon Square was the world's first ever department store. Some time later, shoppers arrived on special coach services from Sunderland to buy unheard of luxuries such as soap and wax candles. <laughs> and to gaze in awe at such modern contrivances as gas lighting. <laughs> well, it certainly gave them something to tell their grandchildren when they got home this afternoon. <laughs> Newcastle's Theatre Royal is reputedly home to a resident ghost known as the Grey Lady. The poor woman committed suicide in the main theatre hall by throwing herself from the grand circle. What kind of terrible vision, one wonders, could prompt audience members to throw themselves from a balcony? Let's meet the teams. On my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. Tim Brooke Taylor and Phil Jupiter. And uh, placing her comfortable seat on my left hand, please welcome our glamorous scorer, the ever delightful Samantha. Okay, team, this week, round one is all about national anthems. Most national anthems are a bit dull, so the teams are going to suggest alternative, livelier songs which might suit various nations. Uh, Barry, you can start. There is nothing like a Dane. <laughs> Tim. The Funky Gabon. <laughs> Phil. Uh, singing in Ukraine. Graham. How do you solve a problem like Korea? <laughs> I did it Norway <laughs> by Frank Sumatra. Ain't it a pity the Vatican City has never won the cup? <laughs> yes, we have no Bahamas. <laughs> Greece. Sung by Bolivia Newton John. <laughs> Guam up and see me, make me smile. <laughs> Poland, Poland, Poland. <laughs> Sudan, you're rocking the boat. <laughs> the teams are going to sing for us next uh, in the round called One Song to the Tune of Another. Now, you'd need to live in some sort of non-musical, comedy-free, parallel universe not to get this. So, teens, let me explain. <laughs> A song is very much like an African big game reserve. The sun-kissed grass savanna plains represent the tune, which provide grazing for the words or animals. These may be herds of gazelle, but occasionally they'll move on to be replaced by wildebeest, for example. Or, put another way, one song is sung to the tune of another. Now, I can guess exactly what everyone's thinking. What about elephants? And indeed, they are a worry, as unscrupulous poachers hunt them for their tusks. Who could possibly commit criminal butchery over a few pieces of ivory? <laughs> At the piano, Colin South. 
Well, we are going to start with you, Tim, and I'd like you to sing the words of the Hokey Cokey to the tune of Tit Willow. <laughs> you put your right arm in, you put your right arm out, in, out, in, out, shake it all about. You do the hokey cokey, and you turn around, that's what it's all about. Oh, oh the hokey cokey, oh, 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 the hokey cokey, oh, 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 the hokey cokey. Knees bend, arms stretch. Ta la la la. And now, Barry, I'd like you to sing the words of If You're Happy and You Know It to the tune of Lily Marlene. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, Clap your hands If you're happy and you know it Then your face will surely show it If you're happy and you know it Clap your hands I'm only obeying orders If you're happy and you know it Stamp your feet If you're happy and you know it Stamp your feet, good step, happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it, if you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet, stamp your feet. Well, that certainly moved the bar. Now, um... <laughs> Phil, it's your turn next. I'd like you to sing the words of Barbie Girl by Aqua <laughs> to the tune of New York, New York. <laughs> I'm a Barbie girl in the Barbie world. Life in plastic, it's fantastic. You can brush my hair Undress me everywhere Imagination Life is your creation Come on, Bobby, let's go party I'm a blonde bimbo girl In the man Tussy world Make me up Make it time, I'm your darling. And finally, Graham, I'd like you to sing the words of Brown Girl in the Ring to the tune of On the Street Where You Live. <laughs> Brown girl in the ring, tra la 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 la. There's a brown girl in the ring, tra la 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 la. Brown girl in the ring, tra la 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 la. She looks like a sugar in a plum, plum, plum. Show me your motion. La, 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 la. Come on, show me your motion, tra la 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 la. Show me your motion, tra la 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 la. She looks like a sugar in a plum. Well, there we are. 
that round's over. Now, <laughs> the teams are going to engage us with a spot of role-playing now as they portray a scene in a smart restaurant. Okay, I'd like you, uh, Tim and Phil, to play a couple enjoying a candlelit dinner, while Barry and Graham will be over-attentive waiters, whose job it is to interrupt the diner's conversation at the least opportune moment. Uh, call in some restaurant music, if you please. Uh, off you go, teams. Ah, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. You've got a table by the window here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, orders Thank will you. be with you. Over here. Deirdre, um, I don't know how to put this quite. Oof. I'm, I'm thinking of having some plastic surgery done on my... Meat and two veg, sir. <laughs> What's the problem, Charles? Prawn balls and crab stick. <laughs> a a actually, Charles, I myself was thinking of having a little work done. Can you guess where? Your baps, madam. <laughs> I, I can't think of anything you need improving, Deirdre. The large rump, sir? <laughs> <laughs> but I think you're... Mustard. After all, you are my... A little bit on the side. Why, Charles, I do believe that you have a... Semillon? <laughs> Would madam care to taste it? <laughs> I think that I'd prefer a... Robust 69? <laughs> oh, Charles, I simply can't remember the last time that I... Spotted Dick, madam. <laughs> Why do you keep calling me Charles? Your bill, sir. The teams are going to write each other some letters now. Uh, Barry and Graham, I'd like you to start by composing a letter from Nicholas Sarkozy to Silvio Berlusconi. And then Tim and Phil will come up with the reply and so on. However, the challenge is that the letters must be constructed by each panellist alternating one word at a time. Off you go, Barry and Graham. Cher Silvio, I... Uh... Thank you for the letter of paper and <laughs> ink that you sent so kindly to me and my lovely wife. <laughs> Thank heaven for little girl. <laughs> also... <laughs> I want to inform you that we are having a party tomorrow in the Champs-Élysées and also we will be having a another party <laughs> in the back of the Eiffel Tower on which, by strange coincidence, is one of the most beautiful <laughs> memories I recall having recalled. <laughs> so, in conclusion, I would like to just say to you that I am very happy, <laughs> yet... Strangely <laughs> and <laughs> poignantly sad to say that we will never meet each other <laughs> unless <laughs> you and her <laughs> come to the Elysee and squaff. Yes, 
Squaff. <laughs> Repeat, quaff. With us tomorrow. <laughs> I also look forward to seeing you and clasping your wife <laughs> by the waste disposal. Unit, which is in the kitchen, just above the large sink, or sank, as we call it here in the center of Paris. Bye, 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 Delilah. Ciao, Nicolas. If you can come to Rome, to my house, then I will introduce you to my little friend. <laughs> she is very, very, very tiny. <laughs> and uh, I love to really touch her on the Dolce latte. If you know what I mean. <laughs> so come to Rome and bring with you a wife. <laughs> I will give you one <laughs> of my wives. So come when you feel like it. Your very good friend, Silvio. The next round is called Historical Answer Phones. This is where the teams imagine what messages might have been left on the answer phone machines of various characters from history, such as Adam and Eve, for example. Hello, we've both gone out. Leave me a message, or, if it's for the other half, I'll tell him when he gets home. Uh, hello, Mr. and Mrs. Adam. It's Reg here from Mr. Figgy's Leaf Boutique. Uh, we now have the latest summer styles all in stock. Uh, stuck for a pair of pants? Why not take a leaf out of our book? <laughs> Order now. You don't want to wait till autumn when the stocks come down. Bye. Uh, hello, Adam, Eve, God here. Oh, uh, anyway, <laughs> hi, gosh. Um, <laughs> oh, listen, don't know if you got the, the whole message thing. I, I left a while ago about the apple. Quite important. Um, any, if you could, give, give, me, give me a ring back, you know, whenever... Um, gosh, I hate these things. Um, <laughs> just give yeah, yeah, whenever you want. OK, go on, let's be there. Bye. <laughs> Hello, Richard Dawkins here. <laughs> You're having a laugh. Okay, teams, let's try another. <laughs> Hello, Jesus of Nazareth here. But then I am, of course, everywhere. Uh, leave me a message and I'll come back to you. Jesus, it's Thomas here. Um, I think I dialed your number anyway, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> um, look, look, I'll call you back. Look, you've got caller ID. Speak later. Ta-da. Uh, hello, Mr. of Nazareth. It's... It's... <laughs> it's Reg here from Galilee Takeaway. We've uh, sent out the order for your sermon buffet on the mount. The bike's on its way. Now... <clears throat> thing is, you ordered set menu A, and that's five loaves and two small fishes. Well, unfortunately, due to a computing error, we will be delivering 5,000... <laughs> Rusty whole meal bloomers 
and half a million kippers. It's our, our mistake. I hope it doesn't cause you any problems. Bye. And finally, uh, Guten Morgen oder Abend. Sie hast die Anzeigemaschine von Adolf Hitler gefunden? Ich habe nach dem Shops für ein Daily Mail gegangen. <laughs> But tomorrow, die Welt! Adolf! Bubbler, it's Maury, you never call anymore! <laughs> Come over, we got some bagels, we'll have some chopped herring, some Passover wine. Could that be a schlemiel? Call me! Hello, Mr. Hitler. It's Reg here from Sketchley's The Cleaners. Your Führer outfit is ready for collection at your convenience. Uh, it's come up a treat. <laughs> But unfortunately, the moustache appears to have shrunk in the wash. <laughs> Bye for now. Um, Churchill here. Uh, it's about your car insurance. <laughs> Hello, Albert Hall lost property here. <laughs> I think we've found your umbrella. There we are. Well, it's music time again as we're set to revive the great tradition of community singing. Uh, speaking as a lover of the more traditional types of music, I couldn't help noticing recently that Bob Dylan is at his first number one in 39 years. But then I understand that afflicts a lot of elderly men. <laughs> the round is a musical game called Karaoke Koki. Colin Sell will play a short introduction to a well-known tune, which the audience should hum for the teams to guess. Audience, the title of your first song will now be relayed to you via the display screen. And here's the mystery voice for listeners at home. The Bladen Races. The Bladen Races. Okay, audience. Uh, Colin will play you a brief introduction. And then off you should go. So, fingers on buzzers, teams. <laughs> Tide's coming in. <laughs> oh, that's uh, Tim. Tim. I know it's Verdi, but. <laughs> Celeste Aida? Well, it's, it's good, but it's not right. Um, <laughs> carry on from where you left off, please. <laughs> And they are. Uh, it's Graham. Should we just wait till this train's gone past? <laughs> <laughs> I think you, you, you will be kicking yourselves when, when, when you hear it. <laughs> ah. Ah, ah. <laughs> ah, that's very... <laughs> It's the Bolivian National Anthem. <laughs> Is it the Ascot Races? Oh, 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 that's well. I think we we're going to have to stop it there. Is that, that Blade? That, it's the Bladen <laughs> races. races. Yeah. 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 The Bladen races, often referred to as the Geordie National Anthem. So let's uh, let's try another. That one went so well. Uh, <laughs> here's a, here's a further song title for you, audience. And here is the mystery voice for listeners at home. Cushy Butterfield. Cushy Butterfield. Are you ready, teams? Colin, would you give us another intro, please? <laughs> Just in case you're wondering, teams, they have started. <laughs> Barry, fly to the bumblebee. I don't know any tunes with one note. Uh, that's, that, that's a fair comment, actually, Tim. 
That is a fair comment. I, I for one, am disappointed. Can we try it with just the ladies singing? Because they yeah. tend, yes. to, yes. tend to do right. these things much better. They're clearer. Just the ladies. <laughs> That's Graham. Can we have just the men? <laughs> this is this is like the worst hip hop gig ever. <laughs> just the ladies. Now my homies. Right, we'll have, we'll have one more try at it, okay? That's Barry. Can we have just the Lib Dems? <laughs> well, I, I don't think you're going to get oh, it. Oh, we're not. I don't think you are. I'll tell you, it's Cushy Butterfield. Oh. It's a, a well-known, it oh, says okay. here... <laughs> It wasn't anything like that. The colour cushy butterfield. It says a well-known Georgie song, yes, right? Yes, it is well known. Not just, to them, just it's not. not the tune. That's <laughs> that, that was a remix. <laughs> well, it's very nearly the end of the show, but there's just time to fit in the Chocoholics Film Club. Samantha has to nip off now to meet her theatre director gentleman friend who's staging a production of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> Samantha has designed the posters for him, but she's used a chocolate bar brand name which isn't allowed, and for copyright reasons, they need to change the title. So, not only are Samantha's Snickers coming off, but she's got to take his Willy out as well. <laughs> So while she's away coping with that, I'll ask the teams to suggest titles of films likely to appeal to an audience of chocolate lovers. Graham, will you start, please? Local Aero. <laughs> Barry. The Guns of Toblerone. <laughs> Tim. The Bourneville Ultimatum. And Phil. The Horse Whisper. Oliver Twix. <laughs> Terry's old Goldfinger. <laughs> Gone in 60 seconds, but very tasty. <laughs> oh, Ferrero Rocher's day off. <laughs> Bring me the cream egg of Alfredo <laughs> Garcia. <laughs> Rolo Cop. So, ladies and gentlemen, as the little green man of fate flashes over the zebra of time and the zookeeper of destiny puts the startled zebra back in his pen, I notice it's the end of the show. So from the team, Samantha, myself and our marvellous audience here in Newcastle, it's goodbye. Goodbye! Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Phil Jupiters were being given silly things to do by Rob Bryden, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson and the producer was John Naismith.